Good afternoon. This is Ken Long at Tortoise Capital with a review of the weekend trading report for July 21st, 2018. The market is in bullish quiet conditions. On an annual basis, using NDX 260, we are still overbought at 85 out of 100. On a 10 day basis, using NDX 10, we're at the higher end of neutral with a score of 68 out of 100. Looking at the market mosaic, price with respect to the 200-day moving average is yellow bullish, 4.12%. Slope of the 50 has degraded to red neutral at 0.43. ADX is uh, neutral with respect to strength of trend at 15.4. The risk index is the 30-period moving average of the VIX divided by the 10-period. 1.0 is the boundary between risk on and risk off. With a score of 1.085, we are into risk on conditions. We take that number and look at the last 5,000 trading days and compute the risk Z based on the average and standard deviation of volatility of the last 5,000 days. That current reading is at 0.85. This is a 90 day histogram of that indicator showing that we are almost at one standard deviation above the long-term average in terms of um, uh, degree of quiet or lack of volatility, actually. So green in this case is lack of volatility, and that's good. And uh, you can see we're starting to roll over here a little bit. So this is a, um, we would think of this as spring into the summer, and this is a time to be wary and to pre preserve swing profits especially and to be ready for a potential rollover into the fall and the winter, in which case we would be emphasizing shorter-term trades, grabbing profits sooner rather than later. In blended monthly rebalancing, these are the current holdings, still holding up well. Next reevaluation is due on or about 1 August. You can see the leaders in the various portfolios based on Friday's closing prices. ETF2, the theoretical exposure remains at 40%. This is the blended monthly rebalancing ETF 13 portfolio with uh, winners in technology and small caps and uh, U.S. real estate leading the way. The globals remain underneath their four-month moving average. You can see the real difference that there is in getting the regions or the broad indexes right. ETF 32 portfolio, again about half are on buy signals, half on cash, dominated by the U.S. and technology, consumer discretionary. Consumer staples, I just want to highlight that, has been making a comeback. This was the worst performer among the sector spiders for a while and is now starting to, uh, uh, to uh, improve. You can see it actually has relative strength advantage against some of the other uh, longer-term leaders. So. That's another. That's one we'll be continuing to watch. Brazil, Latin America continuing to suffer long term, but as we have been managing and following along here, uh, really benefiting from a short term swing. And I'll talk more about that later. Dow thirty, evenly split between buys and cash. Uh, leaders remain Nike, Visa, Microsoft. Uh, Coke is starting to make a move. <clears throat> Um, some potential turnarounds here in GE and 3M based on their one month uh, performance. Um, GE, however, suffering the most in the last week. Um, so 3M is on my radar for sure. Uh, coming back, I do like Coca Cola here. Um, that one week and one month performance uh, is offsetting some longer term suffering. So I'd be thinking about Coke moving its way towards the top of the stack. Um, in the sector, spiders generally buy signals across the board, except for some financials here, metals, mining, and materials. Um, big strength was in uh, banks and transportation this week, along with healthcare. ETF Max looks at a population of about 500 liquid ETFs. Um, Leading candidates, small caps, healthcare, uh, technology, more healthcare in the stack, all of the small caps really start really continuing to do well. Uh, market health check um, 
the vertical blue lines are 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 days of look back. The horizontal purple lines are price targets to the upside. Um, this is an all-time high up here. Uh, and then the horizontal red lines are support levels that have held in the past. Uh, the PSAR it flipped right here when uh, we got into the uh, into the spring of MACD. This would be um, when it crossed the zero line winter, turned, crossed spring, and this has been an, and then became summer right here. This has been a nice little move um, that we've been able to tie into, coincided with a nice flip in the PSAR. So this was uh, uh, another example of reliable signal, and then confirming with the baby dragon here low higher low, higher low again, uh, baby dragon and dragon also helping us sort this out. Still room to the upside to go. You can see the 10 period regression channel is positive. The 30 period is now shifted to positive as well. Uh, and so if it can hold here um, above the 30 or at the, at the dragon itself, then it's poised to make another nice run to 284. ETF regional report, four of the six indexes are on buy signals, all the U.S. in this case. That leaves us at 40% invested, 60% cash in the, in the asset allocation model. Um, the S&P at 67 is still better than the Euros at 46. Um, the U.S. indices, the strength is in uh, technology, then small caps, then mid caps, then, then large. Two weakest sectors remain Latin America and emerging markets. See the strength here, technology and consumer discretion. But now XLP staples are starting to make that, uh, that little recovery run after a longer term period of underperformance. Um, all U.S. all the time right now favoring anything small cap and then basically anything growth. Uh, both Europe and Asia are suffering with just a couple exceptions. Canada is doing well. Um, Latin America and Brazil have been crushed, but uh, they're starting to improve. I mean, Brazil's gone from 0 to a 15 here, um, so still room to go. ETF top 30. Um, biotech is a new leader. Uh, real estate, new leadership. Um, and again, you can see our, our strategy, self-explanatory strategy map. Shifting to the daily report, Latin America signaling a potential short side uh, setup. If it if there is weakness in the market and more weakness in Latin America, that's your auto short right there. Um, you can see the um, ten day max pains for the three different uh, symbol universes. Half a dozen 551Ws, a couple channelings, um, half a dozen auto framers testing out better than two to one. Plenty of fraud quality numbers, uh, not unusual given the declining volatility. That's normally a sign of, of increasing frog numbers. And then we got uh, Verizon, General Electric, and ExxonMobil all alerting us on the RSI too. Um, real strength here in Microsoft um, on most time frames along with Visa. Uh, no signals on them for, uh, for swings but those would be places that I would be looking for adding momentum uh, as well. Uh, real uh, Some local weakness, short term weakness here in Caterpillar. In the ETFs just a handful of dojis and half a dozen auto framers, a couple 551Ws in oil and oil exploration which had been outperforming over longer time frames but got getting crunched here in the past 10 days. Um, Latin America and EWC, I just want you to notice, one day, 10 day, and one month, this trend has been a, has been available to us. Um, and it's quite often that deep value plays off the bottom on these broad indexes, uh, rewards uh, those who are paying attention. And closing price breakouts uh, for the last 10 days and one month, um, especially in Brazil, which had a really good day. Daily pinch and stretch. There's no super pinches. Uh, everything is moving to the upside. That came out of that we're in super pinches before. Uh, Disney, Latin America, uh, 
uh, Brazil and Mexico. Here we are, folks. The numbers do not lie. Uh, auto framer with the usual suspects and the mechanical framing. Um, regression line fractal framework. Uh, finding on the top shelf in the green the symbols that are the most numbers of ATRs below their long-term uh, fair value. And uh, on the bottom shelf in the red, these are the ones that are the most number of ATRs above their long-term fair value. Daily squeezes. Uh, these are relatively volatile symbols that had such a tight compression of a doji on Friday that if, it, if we do see a breakout above Friday's high, that you can get better than two to one if it simply has a um, uh, a range stack kind of a day. So there's some potential here, which I like to see in the S&P, McDonald's, uh, Dow 30. That means the market itself is poised for an explosive move up um, if we get any kind of buying pressure. So this is a new one. This is a prototype report. I'll just read it right from the screen. Prototype of the new MACD seasonal screener, or the four seasons of MACD. Uh, and this is a swing trade generator. So the MACD and MACD histogram indicator simplifies and supports our, our RLCO framework. And it can be used in conjunction with the RISC-Z uh, for swing trading. I'm working on getting that compiled into a single report, um, but first things first. Um, already finding very interesting setups. I'm already trading it at a production level. Uh, the spring screener is my current favorite. So in our um, screening worksheet, um, the first thing I'm looking at is the bias. Is the MACD line above or below the zero line? If it's a, below the zero line, it gets a bias of a score of zero. If it's above, it gets a score of one. Then I look at the slope of that MACD line. If it's sloping down, I'm sorry, the positive slope, so, uh, so it's higher than it was the previous day, uh, it gets a one, otherwise a zero if it's negative. Then I look at the MACD line versus its own EMA5. That's sort of a confirming uh, indicator. Um, if the MACD line is above its uh, EMA5, then it gets a one, otherwise it gets a zero. Uh, and then we look at the MACD Z-score. We compute that compared to its own Bollinger Band 30. Uh, and then we treat any score greater than 1 or less than minus 1 as an um, interesting alert. Uh, and so when I'm looking at the spring, what I want is a bias of 0, meaning that the MACD line is below the 0 line, but the slope has curled and is starting to move up. So that's almost like a, a morning hook intraday or becoming a P1 uh, if it was the RLCO. And then I want to see the MACD line has crossed its own EMA5 to the upside and then is still below its Bollinger Band mean on the MACD. And what that says is if there's still room to go that it's early in the turn and now I have a frameable trade. Now these symbols here are all the symbols that as of Friday have signaled um, that they are in the spring. They all have a they are all below zero line. The slope of their MACD has hooked up. The MACD line is better than its 5 EMA. And then I simply rank this by uh, how many standard deviations below its zero line, or the BB mean it is. Uh, in this case, um, uh, uh, metals is at uh, minus 1.14, is well below its zero line. So that's the one that has the most room to go to get back to normal. Uh, and that's why I'm interested in it. Uh, so McDonald's, uh, Coal, Cisco, uh, DuPont, uh, all are things that are of interest to me on this chart. And then I will typically go and frame them in the usual way. So here's an example of McDonald's using that spring. So you notice the, um, MACD, the MACD line is below the zero line, so there's a negative bias. But the slope is positive, so it's healing. That gives it uh, plus one. And then across its own five period moving average, that's, uh, that's confirming the improvement. Uh, and then it's still uh, below its own Bollinger Band mean midpoint, meaning that there's still room for it to go. So when we look at this indicator, uh, this is the kind of setup that I'm looking for. 
that we would have had an unambiguous move. And now instead of failing further, it's put in one little improvement already, pulled back. And now if it finds support above this uh, RL10 band or the Baby Dragon or the PSAR, then this is going to be really favorable. You can see it came down and tested, but then closed positive going into the weekend. So I'm ready to buy this at the first sign of price uh, going above Friday's high because that will be more buying pressure and simply using the PSAR as my execution stop, so about $3. Uh, and then my target is the Bollinger Band mean. And then here's the long-term fair value of that RL270. And then here is the upper hump of that dragon. So 167 is well within play and it's still well within the normal range of this sideways oscillator. So this is uh, a place to buy McDonald's on sale. Now I want you to notice that when you get these PSARs, um, uh, you can get some nice long, uh, nice long runs and favorable moves. And when the PSAR flips, that's an indicator that run is done. And now look how nice, long, and smooth these uh, swings are in McDonald's. So I feel like we could be tapping into this move early and again as long as this uh, support level here holds then we're actually buying pretty close now if it violates I'm instantly going to auto short that uh, because as you can see this will have tried a couple times to improve and it failed and uh, fair value was declining and so this is a critical state in McDonald's that there is an equally strong argument for a long side move as well as a short side move and that's precisely the kind of moves um, that this um, uh, indicator, the MACD spring screener, is supposed to find. It finds troublesome things. So let's uh, let's see what Cisco takes. Uh, take a look at Cisco and see what that says. I'm not as fond of Cisco. This is this is a case where it has been failing. A nice long pullback um, after a long run that brought it all the way up here and its decline. It has failed to fail further. Um, I don't like this one as much, but you can see that this meets all the criteria of the spring. Um, the fact that this is getting into a nice compressed area tells me this is more likely to be something like um, a breakout. So I might do something something like this, a violation below uh, the PSAR or a breakout above that PSAR. Um, and I might play this as a, uh, as almost like a Z3 pinch it's not quite a pinch yet, um, but uh, that's about the way I would play that. I would, I would think this would be the downside target, and I still like that as the upside target. Uh, so we'll just be stalking that when I'm not in a hurry. Um, uh, last one we'll look at is DuPont. Um, you can see this one is also in the spring. It's had a, uh, it, may, it was the fall crosses the zero line for the winter. Now when it crosses its own 5 EMA, the slope is up, it's above its 5 EMA, it's still below the zero line. Uh, and uh, we've got a nice support level here built in around 65.50. I would be willing to buy this one when, uh, when it breaks through the dragon, not later than there, but I would be willing to buy this uh, above Friday's high. And then if it breaks through 67.58 then we are early into a move that gets it back to fair value at almost 69 uh, and then it's going to test uh, 70.50 and then above there it's free and clear uh, so there's some interesting potential in DuPont and you can see that it has been uh, after a big sell-off period it still uh, has to get back to 77 but this has been generally healing and now you have an upward recovery, an orderly pullback that has not failed really below 65 and held, uh, so a chance to get it at 65.82 is really only risking 80 cents. And then if it fails here, then you, you can auto short, and then you're looking for a price move back down to 63.5, and, um, and then 62 and three quarters, and if that fails, it's Katie barred the door to the downside. So again, this is a uh, this is a move that is uh, forming, getting ready to form a Z3 pinch here pretty soon uh, once volatility declines a little bit more. So um, this is how I'm using this MACD histogram uh, screener.
Uh, and what we've done is uh, build a separate spreadsheet to help us find uh, not only those that are in the spring, but there's reasons to be interested in things in the winter. Uh, these are ones that are failing, failing worse, and those have become auto shorts on weakness. Uh, summer is something that's already turned in a nice move. So if you can tap into the transition between winter and spring, and then play that long side with a swing through uh, spring and summer, and then harvest somewhere here in the fall, you'll be well postured to be in line with uh, the seasons of the swing trade. Uh, and uh, we'll be covering this more at our weekend workshop or uh, annual uh, research workshop uh, this next weekend and we'll provide people um, copies of our spreadsheets to start working with and I'll be presenting more of this on our weekend um, advanced swing trading Q&A um, uh, this weekend so um, pretty excited about this one it, it aligns very nicely with the RLCO I think simplifies some of the, that price um, uh, ambiguity of price action uh, and smooths that out. And it synchronizes very nicely with, uh, with the risk C. So um, moving on. Um, the 30 uh, period regression line in the, in the S&P is rolled up, as has the polynomial. Uh, you can see it's, it's at the long-term average here and now is starting to improve so this is a market that is it may not feel like it but this is actually putting in a series of higher lows um, and is recovering after this uh, that harsh sell-off after the trump bump so this has been a long bottoming process and i'm ready to reward strength and um, the fact that it made the turn here and didn't come back all the way down says this is a market that's healing it itself after two big harsh sell-offs um, these sell-offs have been less, the lows have been higher, and now it's postured to make another run. So this is actually a healthy uh, time period. We're right at the long-term average of uh, RL slope for the S&P, so this is, this is actually healthy. Volatility is still very low. And that's favorable for the long side. The 30 has, has rolled up. The 90 is marching along. This is evidence of a market that is healed. So after this, you can just see from here, the 90 was already at two sigma favorable. That was really an odd and unusual move. This last leg uh, was the abnormality. This was probably the fair value, and that's where it's held. And now you can see that it's putting in uh, these upward moves and it's stabilized here the last time it stabilized there was a nice bump um, so and then here was a stabilizer and a bump so I'm looking at uh, 286 is not out of the uh, the realm of the possible uh, so that's everything I want to cover uh, for today um, there's still time you got one more week to uh, lock in the discount prices for the the home study version of this year's research weekend and the live trading week, which we'll be recording. Um, still a chance to get in and uh, with a nice discount. If interested, just send me an email and we'll get you squared away. Uh, that's everything from Tortoise Capital. This is Ken. Uh, take care of yourself and um, be safe. Keep your wrist measured and your powder dry.